In the last video, we got all of the plumbing for this sump set up. Control the mm -hmm. amount of water that comes down this drain mm -hmm. using our gate valve. Yep. So even though the tank has water in it and the sump is running, which is what we need, we need that as a good start, we actually need to start to build our bacteria colony in the tank to cycle our tank, which just means that the water is going to be healthy and clean and ready for when we actually put fish into the tank. You might put heaps of biological media in here, and a Java fern refugium, floss in these. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's what I would recommend doing today. This will allow you to have some uh, good uh, mechanical filtration. So it would really just be mechanical here, then all of your biological stuff in these Correct. two big ones, and then that's where it goes back in. Exactly. For this one, I'm just going to focus on actually setting up the filter so that it's ready to start actually building its bacteria colony in it. If you're enjoying these episodes, then please don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and turn on your bell notification to get notified each time I upload a new video. And don't forget to comment and let me know what you think as well. All right, let's get into it. So I'm at aquariums now and I'm having a look at some of the filter stuff for the sump and I'll show you what I'm having a look at at the moment. So let's come over here. This is the selection of stuff that they've got for the filter and I'm thinking that I'm going to actually get these ones, so the Dymax Pro Light ones, because they can filter up to a thousand litres, um, this box, and they're just nice little blocks that you can just put in the sump, so I think that they're going to be quite nice just as a starting thing, because they've got other things like the marine balls and stuff, but I think that I'm just going to go with them just because of the ease of it, then at least I've got something for my bacteria to start to grow on. I'm keen to actually make a refugium. I will not be doing that for a little while because I want to get the tank cycling before I add plants in and stuff. So it's just a something that I'll be working on. So if anyone's got any ideas um, for the plants and stuff you think I should choose to put in there, let me know. Then the other thing that I just need to get is some stability. So it's just down here, little selection that they've got here. And I think I'm going to get this bottle. So. That one treats up to 5,200 litres, which is plenty. And that'll just help to kickstart it and I'll make sure that I add some ammonia in as well um, to feed the bacteria in it. The only thing that they didn't have was filter socks to put into the sump. So the only ones they had were these ones and these are um, square ones, but I need to get round ones for in the water box sump. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to head to Gallery Aquatica and see what they've got there since they've got more of the marine stuff. Um, they might have some nice things to look at as well or some options um, for things to put in the sump as well. But I think for today, just getting the blocks will do. So getting those and the bacteria to get the cycle started and at least then we know that we're making some progress. So that's the plan for now. I've got the Dymax Pro Light blocks. So I'm gonna get them out and pop them in. And I'm just placing each of them in here. And so the idea is that if I put them here, then the water has to pass through here to actually get through the tank. We'll get through the sump, I mean. So hopefully that's a good spot. Let's cut this to size. And I reckon that should quieten it up. Heaps. So that's normally where our filter socks would go, but that would probably make it a lot quieter too. But this will do for now. Right, so it's been a couple of weeks and I've added some extra things to the sump and I'm going to show you those things now. This filter floss here was working amazingly at actually clearing up the tank from all of the murkiness from some of the sand that I put in it. And I really like it, but it was actually stopping the flow quite a bit. And this was more just a temporary thing um, before I get some filter socks to put in here. But I have added some green sponge as well to filter out some more debris from the water before it gets through into this area. And I'm gonna get some more kind of weedy plants to put in here, ones that don't look as nice in the main tank, but they're gonna be good for taking out some of the nitrates and grow quite well in there, I'm hoping. Then on this side, you'll see that I've still got those Dymax blocks that I originally put in here, but I've just added a bunch more media. So I've got more bio balls in here too. And then I've got this, which I think is lava rock some type of lava rock but it's just a really nice porous material so lots of surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow on but that is where we're at at the moment 
So, what I am going to do now is I'm going to head to Gallery Aquatica. I thought this would be a good opportunity to just show you a little bit of the store too um, when I go in to get the filter socks. So, let's head out there now and have a little bit of a look and see if we can get some socks, some filter socks. All right, so I'm just in Gallery Aquatica. Ooh, was that working? I'm just in Gallery Aquatica at the moment and having a little look around. I'll just quickly show you what the store looks like. So they've got two stores. They've got Wynnum and Salisbury, I think it's called. This is the Salisbury one. And it's basically half reef or marine. And then on the other side over here, they've got all of the freshwater stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot of the hardscaping from here. So they've got a really good selection of rocks and then a really good space as well for actually practicing scapes as well. So for the next video, when I'm setting that all up, most of the uh, hardscaping materials or rocks are gonna be from here. I did actually come in about a week ago or exactly a week ago it was, and I played around with some of the rocks and got a little bit of an idea for what I'm gonna do. So I'm really excited to show you that in the next video. But for this one, I just wanted to quickly show you just the filter stuff. So where I'm getting the filter socks from they've got a bunch of their filter stuff over here now the only issue was is they don't have the water box brand at this store they do have it at their Winham one so cam is going to bring some of the water box ones with him um, when he's coming in here tomorrow so i'm going to duck in and pick them up over the weekend but for the time being i just got some dimax ones i don't think they're out anymore because i took them um, i just got two i think they're felt ones and so they're the finer ones which means that i will have to clean them more and they're not going to um, actually fit as flush as what the proper water box ones will but they're four inch i think in diameter which is what i need um, for the to fit the holes so they should be okay but i'll get four of the proper water box ones and so i'll have the mesh ones which are the fine ones and then i'll no the mesh ones are not the fine ones um, the felt ones are the fine ones that i'll put first then i'll have the mesh ones um, so I'm going to grab those now too and I'm just picking up a wave maker as well for my African cichlid tank because unfortunately while I was doing a water change I did not turn my wave maker off and it broke so I need to get a new one of those. Um, just while I'm in here too I'll quickly show you the lights that I've ordered as well from here for my tank. They're really nice, they're going to look awesome. If you have a look at this tank here, also I'm getting this plant which is beautiful, it's so amazing. And it's only $75 and it's huge. I'm so excited to put that in the tank. Um, I'm getting that. And then these lights under here, I'm getting the smaller version of these and I'm getting three of them. And then I'm getting a frame similar to this, but it's not gonna hang from the wall. Um, I think it's AI actually make a frame so that it can sit on the corners of the tank or um, we'll sit on the sides and then almost give that look like it's a dome that's hanging over. So I think that's gonna look very, very nice. And I'll quickly show you too. So Sam was just helping me working out my filtration for my sump. He was saying that one of the things that you can do too is if you've got it so the float comes over the top, then you can, it's good to lift the actual biological media up provided that it's you know flush on the top so the water flows through it just because otherwise you get a lot of like silt and stuff build up and so the issue with my setup is probably that because the sponge is flush on the ground when i clean it i am going to have to lift it up and siphon out some of that gunk and stuff that's in there um, but this just shows you another way that you could set it up using the coarse sponge and the biological media and then they've actually got an aerator under here as well what i'm going to do is i'll buy the dimax filter socks sorry and um the wave maker and then that's it i ended up getting the dimax filter socks and then i got a wave maker because i broke the wave maker on my african cichlid tank and i've also got a ato because the one doesn't seem to be working it's in the tank at the moment so i'll give you just a little bit of a look wave maker here and this one is a really nice one. It is the AI one. So that's the same brand as the lights that I have on my African cichlid tank. I got this uh, ATO as well, which will be cool to try out. This one is a smart ATO. So it's got a button that you can press to turn it on and off and to reset it if you need to. So you don't need to unplug it, which will be good. Then I got the two Dimax filter socks. These are not the uh, water box ones, well, obviously, but 
the water box ones are more of a flush fit but let's put these ones in for now so that we can get out that filter floss and hopefully these won't clog up the filter as much as what the filter floss did let's get rid of all of that really good at getting rid of the fine particles though like it made the water really really clear and now let's put our filter socks in so I just took one out because I'm worried that it might not fit but we'll see so it looks like this one will fit for here maybe okay this just has media baskets in there, but I can take them out and put filter socks in there instead. So I'll put the other one in since that's fitting. But then also upon the advice of Sam and Cam, I spoke to them and I showed them how I've got the sum actually set up and they recommended that I'd take out some of the sponge from here because it's not doing an awful lot since I've got the filter socks anyway and it's just kind of actually like disrupting the flow of the water. So I'm gonna take out some of this green sponge in here um, and then just put the filter socks in. This is where the filter is at the moment. I left a little bit of the sponge down here and then this is just here purely to stop the noise of the running water. What happens is the water is coming down through here and traveling down there, then it's going up here. This is just here to stop the sound of the water flow and under that it's got two filter socks. So that's mechanical filtration that picks up all of the fine particles and debris that's coming from the tank. Then it's got some more sponge that's just sitting in there that it goes through, goes up here. Down here where I'll put two more filter socks and what I'll do is I'll have the mesh filter socks to pick up the big particles. Then I'll put the more fine filter socks in here to pick up the smaller particles. So then I don't have to clean the fine ones as much. Then I've got some more sponge in here, just as mechanical filtration. And then the water comes through here into these sponges, which are technically for taking out particles, but it's also a good place for some of the beneficial bacteria to grow. But then I've got most of the places for the beneficial bacteria to grow in the bio balls here and then over on that other side. What I'm creating here is going to be kind of like a freshwater refugium, if you will, where I'm going to put some of these easy to grow plants that aren't as aesthetically pleasing, but they grow really easily. So I'll have more of them in here and then the light uh, will help to grow some algae on the bio balls. This is where I might put some of the ghost shrimp as well to break down any food um, that gets into the filter. Then on the other side, got a whole bunch of marine balls there. So the water's flowing uh, through under there. You could put this baffle down if you wanted to and have the water flow through the top, but I didn't want to risk my sump getting too low and then the water not making it through there. So I've just lifted this up. So the water's flowing under here and then up through all of the media that I've got in here. So I've got the Dimax blocks, the marine balls, and then the lava rock. And I've got my heater in here too, to heat the water that is coming from my automatic top off system because this is just cold water in there. So that heats it. And then lastly, it flows over here. This is more, this can be to pick up particles, but it's also more just to stop the sound of the water when it comes through there. And then it's getting pumped back into the tank through there. Let me know if you've got any great ideas of things that I should add to this and what you think I should do and let me know what you think about the idea of the refugium. I think it's going to be really cool. I think what I really like about this too is, I mean, A, it's going to be cool having shrimp in here that I couldn't have in the main tank because I'd probably get eaten. So it's going to be nice housing them. But I really like having a light on the sump because it just makes it so much easier to see everything that's actually going on in there. And one of the benefits too of having a light with some plants in here is that during the night time, when the main tank lights actually go off and all of the plants in there are no longer producing oxygen, then you have this light on overnight. So you can see your sump during the night time, but then also all the plants in here are gonna be photosynthesizing over the night time and producing oxygen for your tank. So that's just a nice little benefit from that, I think. Really enjoying the sump so far. Uh, I'm really, really excited to continue to add to it. So please do definitely let me know if you've got any ideas for it at all. Um, for the next video, it's gonna be a very, very good one because it's gonna be more of the actual aquascaping of the tank. 
So I've kind of been doing things, it's more of a parallel process at the moment of just setting up the sump, getting the tank cycled, but then also obviously choosing some aquascaping materials for what I want the tank to actually look like. Make sure that if you haven't subscribed yet, you do subscribe and hit that little bell notification too so you get notified when I upload the next video because I think the next one is going to be a very, very good one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.